Hello and welcome to the chapter on list manipulation. This is the part 5 of this particular chapter and in this part I am going to discuss a very important program related to list. So let's get started with the first program which is finding maximum, minimum and mean of elements in a list. I believe you are familiar with these terms but just let us revise these terms a little bit before going to the program. So the first term is maximum. What do I mean by maximum? Maximum means finding the highest value in a list of numbers. Let's say we have a list of numbers and out of the list we want to find the element having the highest value then I'll be using the concept of maximum. For finding out the maximum value in a list of numbers I have a function which is max function. Next let's go to the next function which is the minimum. What minimum does? Minimum finds out the lowest value out of a given list of numbers. How do I find out the minimum value out of a given list of values? By using the mean function m i n mean. Next term that we need to see is the mean m e a n. What is mean? Mean means the average of values in a list and how do I find out the average of values in a list? We have already found out what do we mean by mean in our lower classes. All of us know how to find average. How do I find average? It is the sum of all the observations. That means whatever values or items will be there in the list, I need to add up everything. Then divided by total number of observations. So let's say I have three values 11, 22 and 33. How do I find out the mean? For finding out the mean, I will have to add up all these observations. That is 11 plus 22 plus 33 divided by total number of observations. How many observations are there in this list? There are three observations. Therefore, the sum of these values should be divided by 3. Alright, now let us do this with the help of a Python program. So, what we will do? We will write a Python program in order to find out the maximum, minimum and mean of elements in a list. So, I will just put the name of the program in a comment. It is a good programming practice to put the name of the program as a comment. So, this is a Python program to find the maximum, minimum and mean of the elements of a list. All right. So at first what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll be taking a list as an input. So let's take a variable, let's take it as x. Now how do I accept a list as an input? For accepting a list as an input, what do I need to do? I need to use a function known as eval function. So with the help of eval function, what I can do? I can accept a list from the user. So how do I write it? Eval input enter a list. Now how it will help? It will help me in finding out uh, in accepting a list from the user. After that let us directly print out the maximum uh, item from the given list of items. So let us do it maximum value from the list. Now for finding out the maximum value from a list of numbers we use a function known as max. So, how do I need to write it? Max of x. Next, let us print out the minimum value from this list. How do I print it out? By using the mean function. So, before that, let me display it. Minimum value from the list, comma, am I and mean x. Why x? Because x is the variable in which our list will be stored. Now let us find out the mean. Mean means the average. So for that let us take a variable let us say average. Now what is the formula for mean? The formula for mean is sum of all the observations divided by total number of observations. Now while we studied the functions on list we got a function called sum. The, what the sum function does? Sum function adds up all the values in a particular list. So how do I do that? I will simply be writing sum, sum of the elements in a list, the list is stored in the variable what? 
list is stored in the variable x. So, I will write here sum of x divided by total number of observations. Now, how do I find out the total number of observations or total number of elements in a list? Now, if you go back to my video on functions on list, there was a function called len function. What it used to do? It was used to count the number of elements in a list. So, let me use that. So, I will be writing here len of x. Why x? Because x is the variable where the list is being stored. Now, after doing this operation, the, where will the answer be stored? The answer will be stored in the variable average. So, what I will be doing in the next line? In the next line, simply I will be printing this particular va variable average. So, it is mean. So, let me use the word mean while displaying it. Mean of the elements. Where is the answer located? The answer is located in the variable average. So, let me display it. Okay. And the program is done. So, if I save it, let us say by any variable name. Okay. This is existing. I will replace this. Okay. So, the program is done. Let me run it. So, it is asking me to enter a list. Now, list is enclosed within this brackets. So, whatever values I will be giving, I will be giving within this brackets only. So, let me give uh, three values. Let us say 11, 22, 33 and press the enter key. Now, it is finding out the maximum value. Maximum value from the list is 33. Yes, it is correct. Minimum value from the list is 11. Yes, it is correct. Mean of the elements is 22. Let me check it. You can check it out with the help of your calculator. Yes. So, 11 plus 22 plus 33 equals to 66. It will be divided by number of elements which is 33. 3. So, I will divide it by 3. What I am getting? I am getting the answer as 22. So, let me see here. What is the answer displayed by the program? The answer displayed by the program is 22 itself. So, I am getting the correct output. So, again I am explaining the program. First, in the variable x, I have accepted a list. How have I accepted it? By using the eval input function. Eval input is used in order to accept a list from the user. In the next line, I have used the function max in order to find out the maximum value. In the following line, I have use the function max mean in order to find out the minimum value and in the next line i have used the formula for mean that is sum of the observations how do i find out the sum of the elements in the list by using the sum function so sum x divided by total number of observations how do i find out the total number of observations using the len function so len x will give me the total number of observations the result is stored in the variable average. So, in the next line, what have I done? I have displayed the uh, variable average here and as a result, I got this function. All right. Now, there is a different approach also for finding out the mean. Let us discuss that approach also. All right. So, that can be called as a, let us say, case 2. Not case 2, it is a different approach. Okay. So, the program name will be same. Program to find the maximum, minimum and mean of elements in a list. So, currently we did it using all the inbuilt function. But what if the question says that average you cannot find out using the inbuilt function. In that case, I need to use a different approach which I am going to show you now. All right. So, let us go and see that approach. All right. So, first few lines will be same like I will be accepting a list from the user. So, let us accept it. Let us say x equals to eval input. I will be going a little fast since we already know this. Enter a list. In the next line, I will be printing the maximum value out of the list of values. How do I find it out? by using the max function maximum value from the list 
so for doing that i will be simply using the max function max of x y x because x is the variable where the list is being stored then in the following line i will be just displaying the minimum value minimum value from the list it is stored in the variable mean so it will be mean of x now i need to find out the mean or the average but without using inbuilt functions all right so let's take a variable a okay why a because here i'll be finding out the sum of all the observations before i uh, i have started the program I, the sum is how much the sum is zero so i've initialized it to zero next let us find out the uh, total number of observations it can be found out using the alien function so for that what we can do we can directly also put that function but let's take a variable length so in that variable what i am going to do i'll put the uh, alien function so the result of alien function will be put in the variable length now for finding out the sum of elements of a list what i'll be doing here i'll be using a loop why I'll be using a loop because this is a repeat, uh, repetitive task. So here what I'll do for i in range 0 comma length because I need to traverse each and every element of the list. How to do traversing that I have already discussed in the very first part of this particular chapter. You can go and look at if you have any confusion in this loop. I'll explain it line by line. Uh, so see here what I'll do here a equals to a is the sum equals to a plus the current element how do I find out the current element where is the list stored the list is stored in the variable x this particular variable i I will take up each value from the list one after another so current value can be found out by x i okay so we'll be running this loop again and again till the entire loop is traversed and at the end we'll be getting the sum stored in the variable a all right so here what we can do we can simply display the average average equals to a divided by length all right so after that we'll print out average of the numbers comma average let me save it by some name and first i'll run it then i'll explain it line by line again i'll take the same set of values 11 22 and 33 and i'm getting the same output from this program also both are different programs you can see that first is l1.py and the recent one is l2.py now let us try to understand this program line by line all right so i think the first line is very much clear first line is x equals to eval input enter a list so in this line what can be done a list can be accepted let's say the list entered so let's say this is the output screen so what will be the first line of output it will be enter a list let's say the list entered by the user is 11 comma 22 comma 30 3 then let's come to the next line print maximum value from the list so what will come in the output maximum value from the list i'm not writing the complete line max of x what max of x will do it will find out the maximum value from this list which is the maximum value it is 33 so 33 will be displayed in the output screen Let's go to the next line which finds out the minimum value from the list which is the minimum value out of these elements it is 11 so 11 will be displayed in the output screen the main part that we need to understand is these lines so let's try to understand this line at first the value of a is 0 then length is found out length equals to len of x so if I assume x to be this particular list what will be the value of len x now how many elements are there in the list we have three elements in this list so the value of len x will be 
3. That means the value of length is 3. Then let us go to the next line for i in range 0 comma length. What is the value of length? The value of length is 3. So what will be the values within this set? The values within this set will be 0, 1 and 2. Then it will take the first value of this set and come inside the list. So what will be the first value of i? The first value of i will be 0. It will take up 0 and it will come inside the loop. Inside the loop what we have? We have a equals to a plus x i. What is the value of a? The value of a is 0 currently. 0 plus x of i. x of i means the value stored at the index i. What is the value of i? Value of i is 0. So, it is x 0. x 0 means the first index of the list. What was the list? The list was 11, 22, 33. So, the indexes are 0, 1 and 2. This is stored in the variable x. So, x0 refers to what? x0 refers to the element 11 here. So, we will get 0 plus 11. So, we are getting a new value of a which is 11. Once we get a new value of a variable, you need to forget about the previous value of a that is 0. Now forget about 0. Now the next iteration of loop will run which is now I will take the value of 1 and come inside the loop. Inside the loop what we have a equals to a plus x i. So what we will do a equals to a plus x i. So what is the value of a? Value of a is 11 plus x i. What is the value of i? I, it is 1. So, 11 plus what do I mean by xi? xi refers to the element how much? 22. So, 11 plus 22. We are getting how much? We are getting 33 here currently. So, forget about the previous value of a that means forget about 11. Now, the loop will run again. This time the value of i is 2. So, what will be the value a equals to a plus xi? a is how much? 33 plus x i. x i means x 2. So, 33 plus x 2. x 2 means how much? 33. So, 33 plus 33 equals to 66. Once you get a new value of a, what have I said? You forget about the previous value of a that is 33. So, now entire list is being traversed. Now, it will break the loop and come to the next line. In the next line, what is written? Average equals to a divided by length. So, we will get here average equals to a. What is the value of a? It is 66. 66 divided by length. What is the value of length? We have already uh, found out the value of length which is 3. So, 66 divided by 3. If we cancel it out, we will get the value as 22. So, it will be displayed as so, in the average, what will be stored? 22.0. Now, what is the next line? Next line is print average of the numbers. So, what will be displayed in the output? Average of the numbers, comma, average. What is the final value stored in average? The value stored in the variable average is 22. So, as a result, 22.0 will be displayed in the output screen. So, this is how you will do if uh, you are asked to not use any built-in function. So, in that case, we are going to use the concept of loop here. So, this is the program which we did just now without using built-in function for finding out the sum. All right. So, that is all for the day. I hope that this session was useful. I will see you with a different program in the next class. Thank you very much.